Let's make a rubric for this assignment together. Now Canvas has made some amazing updates when it comes to rubrics. So even if you're familiar, stick around. I want to show you some of the wonderful improvements. Now there are two different ways that you can add a rubric or build a rubric. One is directly in the assignment itself. We're going to do that in a little bit. The other way that has some of the new great bells and whistles in it is through the rubrics tab. So over here on the left, I'm going to scroll down until I get to that rubrics tab. Let's go ahead and open that. Here I've got all of the rubrics for this course. I can look and see where those rubrics are used. I can see that this first one is used in two different discussion board assignments. Let me cancel that. I've also got some action options. So under actions, I can edit, duplicate, copy to, which would be sending it to another course, or I can archive them. Let's build a brand new rubric. I'm going to click the create new rubric button. I want to come up with a rubric name and this happens to be for this example assignment. So I'm going to be really uncreative and call it example assignments. And then it wants to know what my criterion are. Now I link these to the students tasks in this particular assignment. They've got three different tasks. Your students will see these rubrics, which is a great way to clarify expectations and make this a very equitable process. But for you, it means that your grading is going to be so much faster. Let's add that first criterion. We want them to come up with a name for their company, what they're going to sell and a logo. So back to our rubric, um, a draft a new criterion. And it gives me several different options. Let's just start with that name. And I'm going to say company name, product, and logo. You can enter more description in here. I'm actually going to leave that blank. You can get rid of as many of these as you want. So I really don't want all one, two, three, four, five of these. Um, I'm going to get rid of exceeds. I want mastery, but you could also change this to, you can change this to full points or met expectations, whatever you want to call this. Um, I also don't want near, so I'm going to get rid of that one, but I do want below. And I also don't want this to be worth three points. Instead, I want this to be worth four points. So I'm going to have four points for mastery, two points for below mastery, and then no evidence. Rating description. This can be incredibly helpful for your students so they know exactly what they need to do to achieve these points. So I can say follows um, instructions for part A, um, including details and a photo of the logo or whatever you want to have here. Below, this would be um, only meets, or I'll say meets less than 50% of the um, expectations. And then no evidence would just be unattempted. They left it blank. You can change the order too. So if you're typing these along and you're like, ah, oh, that's not the order that I wanted, these array of dots allow you to change the order. So I can have below up there on top. I'm just gonna move it there in the middle. You can also delete them as we had done before, or you can add one back in. So let's say that I do want one that, say, that says meets. I'm gonna click the plus button and it automatically gave me a new criterion and it filled in that point value of three. And this is going to be meets. And I'm gonna say meet 75% of the expectations. Okay, so once you've got it as you want it, you can click save. Oh, one more thing, enable range. If I click on the enable range, I don't love the way they've got this set up. I think it's a little bit confusing to say 3.1 to 4. You can still give points in between these different values. So it's completely up to you if you want to leave enable range or not. I leave it unchecked. Let's click save criterion and build another one. For number two, I can again draft a new criterion starting from scratch as I had done, or I can duplicate the one before. So I can hit the duplicate button here to create that second criterion. Now back over to my assignments. My assignment number two says use supply and demand functions to determine a good selling price for your item. 
So the criterion name is going to be item um, selling price. And the description, use supply and demand models to compute. Um, and again, I've got all of these different levels. This time I don't want the meet expectations, so I'm going to get rid of that one. I could also change this below to near, or I can say meet expectations. And I can change any of the other descriptions that I want, including the point values. So if I wanted the second item to be worth three points instead of four, I can also change that to three. Let's click Save Criterion. And then for the next one, let's go ahead and draft that one from scratch. Um, I wanted this to be worth 10 points. I'm keeping track of that. I've got four points, three points, which are over here in blue as well, four and three. Let's do our new criterion, making this one worth three points. The last one, back over to my assignment, revenue, profit, and cost to determine a good production level. Okay, this is a um, business calculus class. Okay, prediction level. Enter the description. I'm not gonna do the description, you of course could. I want this to be worth three points. So I'm going to get rid of exceeds and I'm gonna leave the mastery near and below. And I'm gonna change near to meets. And I can again put in my criteria. So all of your descriptions would be here. Did I spell unattempted wrong? Maybe that's not even a word. Um, all of your descriptions would go there. Remember, you could also add something in between. Now I've got all of my point values covered, right? Zero, one, two, and three, up to three. So if I were to add another criterion in between, um, it gives me a three, but I can also change that to a 2.5. So lots and lots of options here. Let me get rid of that one. I think this one looks good. And then I'm gonna hit save criterion. So right now I've got 10 points possible, which just got up there in the upper right for me. And in the lower right corner, I have a preview rubric. It's a great thing to look at because this is exactly the layout that you're, well, not exactly, this is close to the layout that your students will see. Your students won't see the comment section, but the layout that it's giving you is the same layout that we'll see in a few minutes when we go to grade an assignment. Notice I've got a couple of different views. The traditional view is what your students will see without the comment section. Um, then for grading, I can change this to a horizontal view, which is really nice. I can also change this to a vertical view. You're gonna see why those are helpful here in just a few minutes. But what we really need to do is to save our rubric and attach it to our assignment. Let me save this rubric. Now that I've got it saved, I'm gonna go into assignments. You could also do this through modules. You just wanna find that assignment. Um, I'm gonna to go to assignments and mine is the example assignment. Let's click on that assignment to view it. And as I scroll down to the bottom, I'm looking for that plus rubric button. Let's go ahead and click the plus rubric. Now, remember I said that there are two ways to add a rubric to your assignment and both of the options are here. So it's brought up the start of a rubric. I can click on the pencil to add a description, you know, task A. Um, I can also change the point totals. I can click the plus button in the middle to add some partial credit. So this would be, you know, meets expectation, update rating. I can add a criteria just as we had done before by either clicking new criterion to add it from scratch or by duplicating a previous criterion. So I could do that, but what I really wanna do is to add the rubric that we created. So instead I'm gonna click the find a rubric search tool. This is an amazing tool because it brings up all of the rubrics in the courses where you're assigned as an instructor. So for me, that's a lot of courses. So I know that this is Math 107 and that item number, that four digit number is like three eight something. So let me find it. There it is. And it's gonna bring up all of my rubrics. I can click on them. I can also make this a little bit bigger. That might be helpful. 
As I click on these, it gives me a preview of the rubrics. So you can see as I'm clicking on the other ones, I've got these other rubrics in here. I really want that example assignment. I can scroll through to make sure it's what I want. And then let's click use this rubric. One more important thing that we wanna do is to use this rubric for our grading total. To do that, you're gonna click on the pencil and scrolling down to the bottom, you wanna click this checkbox that says, use this rubric for assignment grading. You can always view it, but it's really nice to be able to use it for grading. Let's update that rubric. Now, as I go into student view, let me go into student view here. This is one of the wonderful things about rubrics. As the students are reading the assignment instructions, they can scroll below and see exactly the criteria you're using for grading. Now I told you that discussion boards are a tiny bit different. Let's do the discussion board next, then I'll show you how to do the grading. Let's so leave student view. I am going to go to assignments. Let's click on that example discussion. And this is a little bit different. Instead of scrolling down and looking for the add rubric below the instructions, it lives as an option in the three dots. So I'm gonna click on the three dots. If for some reason you don't have add rubric as an option, it's because you need to go back into edit and make sure that you've got it checked as a graded discussion board. Mine is, so let me hit save and go back to that rubric clicking the three dots, choosing add rubric, add rubric again. We could create it from scratch, but I wanna find a rubric. Let's go ahead and find the rubric for my class. So that's that 107, there it is with the 3810. It's gonna bring up all of my different options. And again, I can click through these, but I know I want that two post discussion board. Let's choose use this rubric. Now I'm gonna click the pencil because I wanna make sure that I've chosen use the rubric for grading. I'm gonna click that pencil and it gives me a warning. It says that you can't edit the rubric because it's being used elsewhere. And I'm fine with that. I just wanna tell it that I'm gonna use it for grading. So scrolling down, I wanna click on use this rubric for assignment grading. Check, perfect. Update rubric. There's one more warning here, and this one's telling you that you've got your discussion board set to five points, but the rubric adds up to 10 points. I definitely wanna change this because I don't want the 10 points to be extra credit. So I'm gonna click change. So now, um, and then update rubric, and then click the X button, and I've got now a 10 point assignment. Now for the very, 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 very best parts, let's do some grading. We're gonna grade the discussion board and I'll show you the assignment as well. We're in the discussion board, let's do that first. Over to the three dots and then down to open in speed grader. Now I already posted to this discussion board in student view. So it's showing up here in speed grader as test student. So that's what I'm gonna grade. I wanna click on view rubric. Remember those different views that I showed you? This is where they're so helpful. The traditional layout is pretty big, especially if you've got partial credit and you've got some you know, descriptions, it takes up a lot of real estate. So instead of traditional as you're grading, I like to do either the horizontal or the vertical. It really doesn't matter to me, they're about the same. I'm gonna do the horizontal. So this one is posts according to the directions, replies. Um, test student, they posted, but they did not reply. So I'm gonna hit zero. I could also leave a comment here for that first criteria. And I've got an option to leave a comment for the second criteria. You don't have to. I'm gonna hit submit assessment and it added up the points zero and five, giving the student five points out of 10. I can also leave some overall comments here and then click submit. Let's do the same with our assignment. So I went back to assignments and found my example assignment. SpeedGrader automatically shows up as an option on the right hand side. So let's click that. I also submitted in student view. So we've got an assignment here for our test student, and I want to view the rubric for grading. I do not want the traditional view, and this is where it's really helpful because the traditional view, if I wanna see all of it, makes the assignment teeny, 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 tiny. 
So instead, I want to do either the vertical or the horizontal view. Now I can go through and check my students' work. Let's say that they've got mastery on this first one. I can leave a comment here as well. Item selling price, part B. Um, I'm just going to say that they met that one, even though it looks great, just kind of making stuff up here. I can also leave an individual comment. And then for the last one, production level, let's, let's say that they reached mastery on this one as well submitting the assignment it added up those points to give them nine out of ten and of course i can leave some general comments so many more amazing grading tools i've got more for you here